So in this video, I'm going to be walking you through tasking AI, which is a agent framework in order to build AI agents, but it's no good. Now, I'm assuming you already know what AI agents are. So effectively, to give you a summary, they can take in a task, do a bunch of things by coordinating with each other, and then give you the output. So tasking AI is a new open source tool. So you can find their entire code here. You can see this is the entire platform. So you can also run it locally and host it and run it yourself without going on the website. But effectively, this framework allows you to create agents similar to Autogen Studio. So the UI looks similar to Autogen Studio, but it does work as opposed to Autogen Studio, which I tried a few weeks back and it was just a nightmare, right? So let's start building our first agent, which will take in a URL and then summarize that URL for us, right? So in order to use the platform, just go ahead and sign up, click on get started and then you'll go to the auth sign up screen. I'm going to be signing it up with Google. So once you sign up, you should you know, land on something called home and this UI should look similar to the Autogen Studio. Now here we can create a new project. Let's say newsletter project and then we can add a sample description and then you have the option for hosting it which is experience effortless scale with tasking as a well as hosting. I don't know what this is so I'm just going to go ahead and proceed. Let's click on newsletter project and in this is where you will start building agent. So now this looks familiar to the uh, Autogen Studio because all of these things you will also find there. To give you a recap of what it is, so agents are like your managers that do tasks, right? So think of an agent like marketing manager who can do SEO research, content writing, and so on. And all of these things that it does are its tasks, which we will add in tools. So let's say tools will have two things, actions and plugins. Actions is where you can call the API. Plugins is where you can use predefined set of plugins they have on the platform, I guess. Let me quickly add a plugin and you can see there are a bunch of things that it can already do. Crew AI is a great framework to do this uh, because they have, while you can see all of this in a UI, Crew AI has automatically created what you call tools for this, right? Where you can programmatically mention and I have a complete masterclass on creating a completely free agent using your own local LLM using Crew AI. So if you can, if you want, you can check the masterclass out. For now, let's focus on the tasking AI's plugin feature and let's build a news summarizer or a URL summarizer for us. You can also choose models, by the way, where you can see you can uh, you have a bunch of options here. You have Anthropic, OpenAI, Google Gemini, and so on. Going to be using OpenAI GPT-4. So let's click here. This should hopefully open it. A model, so okay, I need to click next. And then I'm going to be using GPT-4 Turbo. Then let's click on confirm. And then here you have to put the model details. So say GPT-4 Turbo. And then we'll add our OpenAI API key. So in order to get your keys, go to platform.openai.com and then create a new key. I'm going to be calling it tasking AI test. So let's create this key, copy this, go back to console, add it here, and then click on confirm. So the model is now created. We can go ahead and create the task. Before we create our agent, we need to create a task that we can assign to the agent or a tool that we can assign to the agent. So in our scenario, because we want to create a very simple agent that can take a URL and summarize it for us, Click on new plugin and then you can see there are a bunch of different ones here. There is news API, there is TripAdvisor and so on. But we just need the web reader that will web read the video from web. We'll also try creating, you know, a transcript of our YouTube videos. But for now, let's just create a web reader. And then you can see we'll need to get a URL from the user and then which will be a string and then that will be processed. So we'll create the web reader here and now a task or an action or a tool is created. Now we need to create an assistant who will then use this tool in order to do that task. So let's say new assistant and then say web summarizer. And you can say things like you are a website summarizer. Go to the following. Get the URL from the user and go to the website and summarize the website for us. So very basic prompt for model, we'll use the model or model that we created GPT-4 Turbo. Click on confirm. And then there are, it seems that you can also put in a system prompt. I'm gonna be keeping this empty. And then this is the memory, meaning how much of the previous chat do you want the model to remember? Now in our scenario, I don't because I just want to put the news URL and then get the summary. So you can have message window which means it can remember up to 20 messages. You can have zero, which means it will remember nothing. And you can have naive, which means it will still remember some things. Now the retrieval is for RAG use cases. And by the way, talking about RAG, I published a complete masterclass on RAG last week. 
So if you're interested, go ahead and check that out. Basically, you can add the links to the website, I guess. Collections is something that we'll, I think, have to create somewhere. But you can basically create the collection and which will contain a bunch of websites. And we'll also try creating one uh, rag-based chatbot. But for now, let's focus on the tool ones and let's assign a tool to this agent, which is the WebReader tool. So let's click on this and then read the web page task, then click on confirm. The UI is kind of unintuitive because I have to scroll down. Anyways, let's just click on confirm and this should create the agent for us. Now you can, to use this agent, you have to go to playground. So you can either go from here or you can click here and then goes to the playground here and where you can start a new chat. Again, similar to the Autogen UI. And now when we, um, I don't know if you're using the right assistant. Oh yeah, so this is the assistant that we created and it's using that. Let's open up a website. Let's go to explanx.ai and put this URL in there. So I'm going to be adding this URL and hopefully it should take this URL and summarize it for us. You can see it's summarizing the website without any further detail about the website. Now you can customize the agent to summarize uh, the website or create say tweets for those website or highlight important points of those website and so on. So what we can do is you can go back to assistance and then let's say you are a social media content generator, accept URL of from the user and write a tweet based on that. Right. So now if we put this, we go to playground and then start a new chat with the same assistant. Then I put the URL now, this should hopefully automatically generate tweets for us. Or did we say LinkedIn post? Hmm. Is it still summarizing the chat or let's see if we change this. It seems we changed it, but might not have taken effect. Let's go from here and then let's start a new chat. Then put the link again. It's still summarizing the website, I guess. It's because of the name. Going to go back, click here, and let's say the tweet, right? So now hopefully it should be able to take the context. I don't know if name really has that impact. Let's start a new chat and then put this in. Again, for all of this that you're running right now, you are consuming your open API key. So ensure that you have enough credits or don't spend if you don't want to spend money running all of this. Again, it seems like it summarized it, but it's not really you know, doing what we told it to, which is right to eat. So let's start a new chat. Okay, it seems that we have to click here. Let's see if that changes anything. We put the link now. We were ch chatting or starting the chat from here. This time I clicked here to start the chat and still summarizing the content for us. Anyways, I think it's cached it somewhere and now it's sending the same query. So again, it seems like a early development of the product. It's still not developed, but it, you get the point, right? So it's an agent that would automatically take certain details and do something for you based on the action that you defined in the background. Now let's start generating something else. So let's start doing something else where we, you know, you can also generate the images or you can summarize. Now we, let's create blog posts, right? Or blog images. When we put the link to the blog post, we want the AI uh, to generate the image for us. So we use DALI 3 and then confirm this. Then we have to put open AI API key again copy this and this is because DALI it's not going to use the direct model and this is a tool what we set up is a model for text not for images so in, if you want to do image generation you'll have to set up the API key separately anyway so now that the image is set up let's set up a new assistant and blog image generator your job is to accept a URL and based on the text generate a blog image for that blog in landscape format. Cool. So now we use the model which is GPT-4 Turbo and then we don't want anything to be retained. You can also put this in the system prompt which will clarify this further. So you can add this as the system prompt here and then inside of the plugin you can add DALI 3 and confirm this and then confirm this. Now that this is generated let's try it out in the playground. So we click on new chat and then we type, we look for a blog post. So when we now go ahead and put the blog link here and we click on send and generate, this should hopefully generate an image for us. I mean, these are all basic use cases of, you know, agents. In a real world scenario where we can also use actions, post the blog or the image is generated, we should be able to also push that to say some other platform, let's say in a newsletter or something on those lines, right? And you can see the images 
generated it's rather sharing a link with us going to copy this and then you can see the image is ready and it was able to take this blog post about jamba which is the new ai model apparently and then based on this it was able to generate this image for us so really interesting stuff let's try something relatively more advanced now so let's go go back to uh, the retriever here oh sorry let's go back to tools here and then see what we can create in action not plugins so in action is similar to you what you would see on the assistants or gpt custom gpt assistants api where you would typically mention something like for example get data from some other website and based on what you receive from that website respond to the user so let's say if you are a weather platform and you want to give out customized notes to your end users based on how the weather is in that area now the weather changes everything and i mean the weather changes every day and the model will not be up to date with the new weather data so what you can do is use action where every time before generating the response to the model or response by the model the api or action will be first run to get the real time weather data for that region and then post that the blog post or note will be generated so again don't think i want to dive deeper in this because this is very simple and i've used this before rather let's try something else let's try summarizing the youtube video using this and then confirm it or we need the api key so it's not going to get the python library that can currently get videos without the api key so i'm not gonna try this because this is going to take a very long time let's see what else we can do let's try the retrieval one and in retrieval one we'll basically have to mention a bunch of websites before we respond so apparently you can also choose an embedding api so we can choose say open ai's embeddings embeddings are basically small pieces of your text so let's say if your web page is 10000 pages long you will have some sort of rule and break down your 10000 pages into different smaller chunks and embeddings will tell the agent which text is available inside of which embedding it's some probability based method let's say we use these small because i haven't really used embeddings of open ai let's call this let's add our open ai api key and then let's call it rag what basically we want to put in a bunch of links that we can use to get data in real time so we selected this and then this like i said this is the number of chunks this can break down the text into and you can call this open ai so because we are reusing retrieval we will have to mention where to retrieve this data from and you can see we have to add a record and the text content here okay so you can add a record or you can also add the chunk just going to copy this text so right now if you ask ask chat gpt about this model it will not be able to respond because this does not have the output for that model so i'm going to be copying this text and i'm going to be creating a new record or you can also directly add the website so let's say we take explanix.as/log i don't think it's going to uh, scroll through each pages each page but let me just take the explanix ai here and then you can break it down in chunk and you can call it explain its source so now every time before it responds it will look through our website before it responds so we've already added the website here let's close this and our retrieval is now ready right so our record is ready i don't know if uh, yeah, it was able to break it down in three separate chunks the record shows zero so okay we have now three records and three one record and three chunks you can if you want more things right so let's say we want that jamba blog we will copy this go back to here in here and add a new website inside this will say jamba explainx right so this will basically help you get data that does not exist in your database and in scenarios where there are more than one websites you can collect in real time you can you know generate a site map like this so let me show you so if you go to any website and do site map dot xml you can see it's going to generate the links for that website right and in in scenarios where you can let's say you want a site map of this then you can copy this and this will this should hopefully give you link of all blogs now you can see these are all the explanix blogs what we can do is copy all of this text put it inside gpt and extract all these links or write some code to extract all these links and then add all of those links here in the tasking ai console to keep it simple i'm just going to say this 
what this will do is before it responds to you, it's going to look for the data inside of this link. So now let's create a tool, I think. Oh no, I don't think we need to create the tool. So we need to create an assistant, but this time we'll use the retrieval. And we've created OpenAI embedding collection. So let's confirm that. And then let's say explain X bot. Language model, we'll use the GPT-4 we earlier created. And then context-wise, we need to have some, some window. We're not going to be using any plugins. And then you have an option here where you can do function calling, which means you can run code. You can use the memory or use user message. So we want to use user message here and then click on confirm. And you can see the chatbot is created. Now, if you go here and start a new chat and ask things like, what is Chamba? Let's first also go to GPT 3.5 and say it's Chamba. And it's, it should not be able to give you the answer because it's not updated. I don't know if GPT-4 will be able to give you. The reason why I tried GPT-3.5 is when you use embeddings, you would typically use it with GPT-3.5 because it's cheaper. GPT-4 is more expensive, plus it already has access to, you know, web browsing. So it should be able to look it up. But regardless, let's see if, yeah, it was able to give us the answer, which basically means that it can access web. So it can answer questions for you. But GPT-3.5 can't. And in those scenarios, having a retrieval sort of a chatbot can go a long way. So you know what, let's create a new model, but this time we'll use GPT 3.5. So we'll use GPT 3.5 Turbo and then confirm this GPT 3.5 Turbo. And then you put in the API key, which we'll get from here. The reason why I'm using same API key is because I can delete this all together and then I don't have to worry about, you know, deleting multiple keys later on the account won't be able to access my data basically. Right? And then now let's create another assistant because we have to select the model again in GPT 3.5 model. You notice that the earlier one we tried wasn't able to answer us the question. So now hopefully it should be able to answer questions like what is Jamba, right? Let's keep naive as memory and then confirm this. And I've not named it, but anyways, let's go ahead and use it. What is Chamba AI. So hopefully you should be able to now answer the question by referring the blog post and you can see it is able to answer. Right. So again, it says it's a model by XAI with an impressive 3.1 4 billion parameters. So the data is wrong. The model is by A to Z. Let me quickly take a look. Yeah, this, this data is incorrect. This is correct. I think this the initial part is incorrect. But anyways, I think really interesting. Let me look up Chamba AI. And this is by 21 labs. Cool. I think interesting rag based chatbot. Now you can also, I think, use this as an API where you can directly integrate this agent on your website and then let your users chat with your data in real time. So really interesting. The fact that it makes it easy for us to run these agents is very interesting. Now Autogen was also interesting, but it was very hard to run. But this seems like an easy way to do this. And if you folks have any questions, let me know. This is a very simple tool to use and it's open source. So if you, if you know how to code, you can actually clone this locally and run it on your own computer without even logging somewhere. Right. So cool. I think that's all for the video guys. Thank you so much.